appreciate our ministry team. It's, it's almost like New Life uh, Ministry School. We've all been ministering some in Matthew chapter 16. I'll be there again today uh, for whatever time the Lord has me. Praise God. I believe today will be deep for some people. Some people will grab a hold of it. Some will some will be interested in it. And some that are playing with their phone, it'll just breeze right by you. But for those that really are hungry, you'll be fed. Those that are thirsty, you'll you'll have a good drink. And those of you who really desire, you'll be filled with the presence and the power of God, not just today, but those of you watching online, I believe it'll go from me speaking here through the camera. It'll minister right in your your home, uh, in your car, hopefully you're a passenger. Ministry has already taken place for a lot of people here today. Lord, we thank you. At Matthew 16, Jesus is talking about some powerful things, and, and I begin to, uh, I get interested in, in the Word. And uh, Pam got to teach. I want to tell you, just a brief commercial, you need to come to the 930 Bible class. Amen. And that's the first one I've set in for a while, and halfway through it, I couldn't take it any longer. Ago. Can I say something? <laughs> I mean, the word of God was just all over me. It's like, praise God. Woo! And uh, it was good. So get there. Pastor, I wish I knew more about the Bible. Get out of bed. You know, get a Bible. You know, for God's sake, you can get a Bible at Walmart. You you might not be able to get a date, but you can get a Bible. Thank you for being here. (laughs) (laughs) Couldn't get a date in the pickup line at Walmart. Never mind. 13, Jesus came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi. He asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Pay attention. They said, Some say you are John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah. Or one of the prophets. This is what the average Christian says Jesus is. They don't really know the depth of who he is. They try to sound spiritual. He said, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you're the Christ. The word Christ means the anointed one or the anointed Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Simon Peter answered, and Jesus answered and said, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. Verse 16 says, Simon uh, Peter. Verse 17 says, Simon Barjona. He has a name change. This is where Jesus names him Peter, the little rock. For for flesh and blood did not reveal this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. He said, I say unto thee that thou art Peter, the little rock. And upon this rock, the huge rock, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he says, flesh and blood. I know that sounds, okay, that's cool. That sounds real churchy. That sounds real Bible-like and all that kind of stuff, whatever translation you're reading. But Jesus said, revelation knowledge. Say revelation knowledge. Revelation Revelation knowledge is what will separate you from the crowd. It's what will separate you from the average Christian. The average Christian goes to church, hears a little sermon meant for little Christians who have little faith. 
But this is what revelation knowledge, literally, not a play on words, but revelation knowledge is knowledge revealed. It's something that is, but has been hidden, but is now revealed. And he says, this is the foundation of the church, Jesus, the head, the foundation. The, the scripture says many times, now unto him, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, the one who is and was and who is to come, the one who sits upon the throne, and at the same time, the one who lives in our heart by faith. His name is Jesus. And this one, he, he is so powerful. It says, unto him, be head over all things to the church. Unto him, be head over all things to the church. Say, head over all things. Head over all things. To the church. There's so many people think the church is 1211 North 24th Street in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Or other churches all over the place. I mean, you can, uh, you can Google it. You can, you can hit your fancy phone. And I even, you know, do things sometimes. You know, I can, uh, let me see that a minute. Uh, even I can operate it. Hey, Siri, how are you today? Not too shabby. Thanks for asking. You know, it's so like, you, you, can, you can do things with your phone and, and you could say, uh, Siri, help me find uh, New Life Fellowship in Council Bluffs, Iowa. And it'll pop the map up. And you can follow it. And say, okay, I'm at church. No, you're at the address of this building. You're at the address where we assemble. You're at the address of this local house of worship that we call New Life Fellowship. Yes, but if you were to ask who the church was, you have to go in the door. Yes. And so, bear with me. I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get to where I'm going. I know that some of you have maybe reservations at uh, Red Lobster. It's closed. <laughs> don't go anyway but this the, the spirit of God wants to teach something today he said flesh and blood didn't reveal this this is revealed knowledge about Jesus being the church that's so what the church the body of Christ we are the body of Christ. Turn to your neighbors, you're the body of Christ. So you play a part. Turn to your other neighbors, so you play a part. And you're, turn to someone else, say, so you're a member. So you're a member by faith, you're a member of the body of Christ. You say, Pastor, well, I, I belong to such and such a church, I went through membership classes, and I joined the church. And I signed a card that says, I'm a member of the church. You're a member of that particular house of worship. Because as many of you know, you can sign up to be a member of the church and live like hell. Because I've seen some of you. I was behind somebody one day, and, and uh, they actually used to go to this church. And I thought, well... Me being me, I got up close behind him and honked my horn. <clears throat> and I did that a couple of times, and they didn't wave at me with all four fingers. <laughs> I thought, that cat's out of the bag. <clears throat> Amen. Anyway, let me get on here. But I, uh, Holy Spirit, help me to say what you want me to say. Just help me to say what you want me to say. Because that's more important than anything I have to say. I sit down at my table, at our, our kitchen table. And that's where I spend a lot of time with the Lord, and reading and, and uh, studying. Friday afternoon, I believe about 1 o'clock, I, I, I tried to write some stuff down. Where it is, and which 
somewhere in my notes. But I sit down, and I don't know about you, but sometimes uh, I'll be praying. I'll be praying about church service. I'll be praying, Lord, let us have a great service. Let us have a service that honors you. And let us, you know, Lord, I pray that needs will be met. I pray that somebody will be saved. I pray somebody will be healed. So you have to know that when you drive in the parking lot, you're driving through some prayers that have already engaged you. Mm -hmm. You might not see it, but there's an angel army of God surrounding this parking lot because prayers. And, but I, uh, I sat down at the table and, and I'd been thinking about this for days and praying about it and, and I thought, Lord, I want to spend some time not just praying for our service to be good. I want to spend some time not just praying that I preach really good. And too many times that happens and all of you preaching and teaching and stuff, I want to, I want to encourage you and singing, doing any, any ministry Spend time with the Father before you ask him to help you be talented and gifted and wonderful. Amen. And uh, that, I had come to that place. I've been doing this a few days, you know, well, I was preaching in 1973. And, uh, and, and so I, I said, Father, I just want to come worship you, and I'm hungry for revelation knowledge about you. And immediately, this multicolored swarm of like storm clouds appeared in front of me. It wasn't destructive, but they were just, just like swirling slow and, and, and dark gray to light gray and to white and all in the mix. And it was swirling. And I go, Lord, what's with the cloud? What's with the cloud? Because all I did is I said, I just, I want to just spend time with you. And I think we're missing it, church, by trying to be up-to-date Christians and not spend time with the Father. There's every kind of person, good, bad, ugly, should be shot by Clint Eastwood on the Internet uh, that will tell you how to preach, how to craft a sermon, how to have great sermon notes, how to have good stories to tell, how to do all of these kinds of things. And, and, and invariably, it'll only cost you $19.95 a month or $29.95 a month or, or all this kind of stuff. Do not get pulled into that. Listen, they can't tell you what the Father has for you. And you can't get what he has for you until you want to spend time with him. Now, if my children uh, at, would come to me, and, and, and sometimes it's like, you know, we know how, well, uh, Dad, I need, I need some money. Or and not that they do that. They don't. But if they were to come to me, uh, I would be able to tell what it's about because they're not going to linger around and just want to hang out with me. They didn't, they didn't come to say, hey, how's it going? What's going on? This and that. Can I get this? Can I do that? Uh, they want money, and they want it now. And as soon as they get the money, they're gone. Here are the tires. Here. Uh, and so my kids don't do that. Beers aren't out of the house yet. And they're still kicking you in the shins to buy them games. But when they just come, hey, what's going on? They just, I just want to spend time. I just want to, I just want to hang out. I just want to be with you. I just want to fellowship with you. I just, I just want to. I just want to hear from you. I just, I just want to talk a little bit and listen a lot. Yeah. Most Christians talk a lot and listen a little. Come on. Are you, are you here? Is anybody? How many people are here today? Yeah. And I, hadn't, I have not been at the table five minutes. I said, I just want to, I just want to spend time worshiping you and... and I just want to hear from you about this in the cloud. And I said, Father, what's up with the cloud? 
You said, stick your hand in it. And I said, what do you want me to? I said, what's, I didn't say why. You don't say why to God. I said, what's in the cloud? And he said, anything you want. You're getting a revelation of who I am when you walk with me. So, but pastor, I think some things we have to really work really hard for. Well, the Bible says he giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Well, pastor, I think that's my plot in life to suffer as a Christian. Nowhere, nowhere. He gives us richly all things. That means richly, not held back, not miserly. All things to enjoy. But pastor, I don't have that. You haven't got the revelation of it. The knowledge of who he is. And who you are and what your salvation contains. You got saved. A lot of people get saved, they buy fire insurance. They don't want to go to hell, they want to get saved. Amen. I want to go to heaven, but I'm content to go coach. I'm going to go first class. I'm going to pull the curtain back every now and then. I'm going to look around at coach. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I believe when you get the revelation, and what is the revelation? Let's, let's go to John chapter 1. I just, I had, I, I don't have really, don't even of the beginning of time to tell you all that went on through that. John 1, 12. But as many as received him to them, he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. And then I'm kind of playing off of Romans chapter 8 that we got into a little bit in in the Bible class. And Romans chapter 8, you know, we're... We're the sons of God. We've got the power of God. And Romans chapter 8 uh, talks about, in verse 17, uh, no, verse 16, the Spirit bears witness with our spirit. When you get born again, that you're a child of God. That Greek word is the Greek word technon, which means a baby. You're a baby Christian. Praise God for people being born again. Can somebody say amen? amen. Somebody being born again. Is anybody here that doesn't know Jesus as Savior? You'll say you're headed to be a technon today, a baby Christian, uh, but a, a baby Christian. But verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, which means, that word sons means eos, which is a mature son. Then, oh, my God. Um, I wish there was two of me. One of me would really be amen in me, I tell you that. <laughs> Verse 19, in one of, the, one of the translations I was reading, said the whole earth is earnestly waiting. And I was quoting it in the David Leggett version on the way into church today. And I said the whole earth is waiting for David and Natalie to take their place yes. yep. in the earth as an adult child of God. What do you mean? I said, Pastor, somebody, somebody needs this over here. Stick your hand in the cloud. Mm-hmm. Pastor, I, I, I don't have enough to pay the rent. Stick, stick your hand in the cloud. Yep. And while you're pulling out rent money, reach way back and pull back a title deed to a property. Too many people are willing. Wow, you saw the cloud? I wish that could happen to me. You're missing the point. Learn to stick your hand in what God has for you. Learn to stick your hand in the word of God and be willing to walk it out. Learn, learn that, learn that. Hallelujah. To believe God. My Jesus. Learn that. Just revelation. Just, I've got an inheritance. Years and years ago, my dad 
set me down in our in my mom and dad's living room uh, or the dining room in Georgia. I want to show you something. Rolls out the the plat and the deed and the survey, and he goes, "This is going to be your part." Just passing it down to my sister and my brother, and he goes, "This is yours." And it took me a minute. And he says, it starts right here, that marker. And it goes to there. And he just went to all the points on the survey marker. How many of you know you've seen a survey before? You know, the little points on the survey. He said, everything inside these markers is yours. I like that. That get me excited. And then he told me, he says, take your four-wheeler and drive around it. And look in there. Because all that's yours. Start walking through it. And looking inside the markers. Because all that's in here is yours. Amen. Praise God. All that's in here. It's like the put your hand in the cloud. That's what he told me. I'm not teaching some weird thing and some of you watching on live, Pastor Dave's preaching something weird. Or why are you watching? <laughs> Come on. Who's the weirdo? Me for teaching it or you for watching it very long. Glory to God. I'll content to be the one with the cloud. Hallelujah. Uh, oh, my. If you can grab a hold of this. Here, listen. Listen. He said, when you understand this, you'll go from glory to glory. When you understand just a little bit of what I've got for you, and you understand that little bit, you're a brand new Christian, both of you are. How long have you been born again? Three months, four months, five, six? You've been born again five months. I feel that sarcasm spirit really hitting me pretty hard right now because <laughs> in five months, they don't move from the back of the church to the front. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, you say, well, what if I couldn't get a seat on the front? It's because you came in late. <laughs> this second row crew here, they've been there since Jesus wore shorts. <laughs> <laughs> You want to know why they're there on the second row every Sunday? Because they get here at least a half an hour early. So they can sit on the second row. That belongs to y'all. <laughs> Amen. You, you get a little bit of this, and, and you'll get a little bit when you're not distracted. Sometimes people sit in the back, they talk, and they comment on one another, and they this, and they're that. I was at a church visiting one time, and little kids, they were just, they were just, parents were making more noise than the kids, and I finally asked them if they would be quiet. I didn't know it was the pastor's kids. <laughs> <laughs> it was. <laughs> you can't kick me out because I'm a visitor. I'm on the back row just visiting, but anyway. As soon as I just sat down and started, I said, I said a little bit, Brother Greg, and I quit, and boom, it happened. When you get, when you understand, how many of you, how many of you know more now than you did when you first got born again? Would you raise your hand? Amen. You know a few things, don't you? Amen. You know a few things. And when you get, you understand the word healing. 
Jesus, let's just kind of come to him. Here's someone to throw it out there. Uh, and, and by the way, if you know somebody that's demon possessed, the Bible said, uh, the Lord told me, said there's deliverance in the cloud too. He said there's deliverance in the cloud. He said, there, but he said there's healing in the cloud. There's healing. And I understand, I studied that a lot. And I've been prayed over about it a lot by prophets. And, and when the Lord's began to speak that to me, and I, began, I know that, Natalie and I've talked, I've taught that before. The word healing in Mark chapter 16, they'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. They'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Right. It didn't say miracles. It said they'll recover. It's a word therapy, therapeuo, which means that healing starts and will continue until completion. Yeah. So whenever we pray for someone today, you will be healed. Amen. And you will be more healed next week. Not that we'll lay hands on you next week. Your healing, you got healed today, June the 10th, 2024. Ninth? I'm trying to advance people. <laughs> June 9th. June 9th. You got healed, and you'll be more healed June 10th. <laughs> you'll be more healed the next day. You'll be more healed the next day. That's step two, more healed the next day. You say, Pastor, what, what else? More healed until you're completely healed. That's step three. Yeah. Hallelujah. You say, Pastor, I want it right now. Be willing for it to get started. Yeah. Be willing for it. Be willing to be prayed for and wait 24 hours before you complain. Right. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And you'll believe God. That's like, Pastor, I'm praying for a marriage to get better. And she won't change. Yeah. It's going to take more than 24 hours, I'm telling you right now. So. <laughs> Pastor, I'm, I'm praying for an increase on my job. You're not even at work. Yeah. Pastor, I'm you have to be willing to have faith that God is going to do something. One of, one of the prayers that is significant to me, it was in 2010. <clears throat> uh, God doesn't mind you praying for animals. Right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you get an animal, a dog or, or a horse or uh, right. a, a cat. I don't know a lot about cats other than Wayne and Shirley have one. Uh, but I, we have dogs, we have horses, but an animal you pick up on somebody with a bad spirit. Now, that's what it is. But the scripture says a righteous man takes care of his, his animals. But one of my, my, my main horse got sick and was dying, and uh, the skin was coming off, literally. And couldn't hardly move. He was, it was a reverse photosynthesis. The vet said he was, he was having a traumatic sunburn from the inside out. And uh, it was a second occurrence. And he called me up to, to talk to me one night to let me know about putting him to sleep. He said, I can, you know, have a great vet, a great relationship with him. And, and anyway, he said, uh, we, we, we probably just need to get this taken care of tomorrow. And I said, let's, 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 let's just wait a little bit. And I went in the barn the next day, and they'd give me, he gave me some medicine. He goes, I'm telling you right now, the medicine, the cure is going to be worse than the illness. And uh, so I went in the barn, and he was in, out of the sun, and, and I went in, and I got myself in line to pray. I got myself in line to, to pray, and I got my I got my words lined up, Pam. And you you're around us all the time. But I got everything lined up. I want to encourage you to get your words lined up. Yeah. If God speaks something to you, like He did to me about the cloud, I want to be careful about my words. 
Say, Pastor, just stick your hand in there. See what you get. That ain't, that's not how it works. No. What do you need? You say, well, <clears throat> what did you need that day? Well, Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus the Lord. And I got to looking at that, Stacy. He said he would supply according to his riches. He did not say, Pastor Nett, he would create anything new. Brother Bill, it's already there. But for most people, it's a cloud they'll never pierce. It's already there. All your needs met Christ Jesus. Your victories in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. For this is the victory in Christ Jesus, the Lord, even our faith. It didn't say, for this is the victory in Christ Jesus. This is the victory in Christ Jesus according to your faith. This is the victory in Christ Jesus according to your faith. That means you have to activate it. You have to act on it. You have to do something with it. And he said he will supply all of our needs. His supply, he didn't say, I will use my creative power to bring something into existence that's never been. What he is saying, by my divine authority as God Almighty, everything I created when the world began and I gave Jesus to be head over all of that to the church by Christ Jesus the Lord, the fullness of him that fills all in all where there is no lack. And to those who believe and have been translated out of the kingdom, of his dear son into the kingdom of light or into the kingdom of revelation knowledge. My Jesus. It's already there. So I got my words right. And I remembered, I remembered Bill Winston. I remembered, you say, what, why do you quote different ministers? You might want to get one of his books or a, or a CD. I started to say cassette tape, but that kind of <laughs> dates me back there a ways. <clears throat> uh, and I prayed in the Holy Ghost. And I remember Brother, Brother Winston said, when you pray about something, be willing to pray about it and then keep your mouth shut for 24 hours about it. And don't, don't bring it up anymore. And so I, uh, I looked at him. I looked at this horse, and he, and, and he was dying. And uh, I mean, I reared back and let her go. I don't remember just word for word how I, I said everything. I said, but in the mighty name of Jesus, I command you to be healed. That's what? Yeah, and I said, I'm not giving you any more pills. Live or die. This is it. You got to be willing to pray some this is it kind of prayers. Amen. And when I prayed that, I mean, I declared that over him, I mean, authoritatively. In the mighty name of Jesus, I declare you healed. And I heard as if it were bacon frying. And the Holy Ghost just showed me that's bacteria dying. Mm. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost, and immediately the devil said, he's going to die. Nothing's going to happen. He's going to die. You know he's going to die. I just said, shut up. And I prayed in the Holy Ghost. And I turned around and looked at the horse, and I said, this is it. And I walked out the barn door. And uh, I went out and fed him carrots yesterday. <laughs> and we're taking donations for carrots, too, by the way. <laughs> 
Would you stand? Hmm. When we say we live by faith, we live by faith of what the Bible says, not blind faith. We base our faith on the Word of God, and, and I don't know why I have notes, but I wish you could have been with me yesterday preaching to myself. Mm -hmm. Knowledge revealed by the Spirit of God will cause you to get into the Word in John 4.23. And God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And you say, Pastor, I come to church and they get loud and, and people get moving around and all this kind of stuff and maybe bumping into me. And we'll get in rhythm with them. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. And God is spirit. God is not dead. When you get to heaven, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, and the heavenly choir sing, it said it's this, the sound of many nations as it were, the sound of waters, of waterfalls and waves. Oh. This revealed knowledge. One, one more thing. How many more? One more things do I get? <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Remember Peter the little rock. He named him Simon Barjona. Peter, the little rock. There's a reason. Remember Jonah? Bar Jonah? The whale story? The water story? Jesus foreknew. He foreknows you. He knows your mistakes coming up. A lot of people, they want, the Lord knows I made so many mistakes. Hey, friend, he knows the ones you've got yet to make. And he loves you. Yes. Glory to God. Isn't that great? Hallelujah. He knew Peter one day would deny him. But he knew because he was the little rock, he would stand strong. Preach on the day of Pentecost and thousands get saved. He also knew in chapter 3, they were going up to the temple to pray. And this crippled man that his friends took him to church and just laid him outside the door. Listen, we've got ushers that will bring you inside. Amen. And Peter had that revelation of Jesus now. And the man was begging alms, and Peter said, we don't have silver and gold to give you. I, I tried to write it out like this. He said, I, I don't have anything, but it was revealed to me and I draw from that supply of who he is and whose I am in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That, that's my supply now. That's my supply. It has, it has been revealed to me that the supply is Jesus of Nazareth, the mighty powerful name of Jesus of Nazareth. Hallelujah. And from that supply... I command you. He didn't say, would you please get up? He said, I command you. He took him by the hand. He helped him up. I command you to get up and walk. And the Bible said the man got up and his legs were strengthened. And he disobeyed right away. What? It said he went running. He didn't walk. He went running and leaping through the building. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, that's divine disobedience. Woo. Learn to draw from that divine supply. 